Parker, nice to have you with us. You know, both these teams lost their last games. Dennis Franchione's first year here at Texas A&M. Tough loss at Virginia Tech. Pittsburgh just might. Just might have been peeking ahead toward this matchup. And they got dumped by Toledo. But I want to tell you, Gary, this is not an easy place for a non-conference team come win. Since 1990, the only one I remember is Virginia Tech. 26 and 1, is that right? I think so. Yeah, that's a pretty good record. Well, the reason is, if you watch AM football, you know this, Brent. It's been their defense, that wrecking crew. But this version of Dennis Franchoni's team is a little bit different. There's no superstars on defense. They don't control the defense. In fact, Virginia Tech put 273 yards rushing on this defense. So Franchoni's going to look for something else with, to help them. On, on the other side of the ball, Pittsburgh defense burned by 551 yards through the air and 62 passes and not one sack. I think both coaches would like some help with that defense. Well, our two quarterbacks here today, both are good. And Rod Rutherford is a fifth-year senior. Reggie McNeil on the right for Texas A&M. Gary, a sophomore, he can be an electrifying president. He really can. I mean, he's got all the attributes. Maybe not just enough experience right now, but when you look at these two guys and take a look at what they can do, they're similar but a little bit different. You got one guy that's got the huge arm in Reggie McNeil. He just got out of the checklist. McNeil's got the arm strength, but Rutherford, been in the system, has the touch, the experience, and he's got weapons he understands. And then both guys, I mean, both guys, Guys can hurt you with the legs. It'll be an interesting game as these two quarterbacks try to control the football game. Well, it's always a great scene here when the Aggies pour onto the field. And Dennis Franciona is taking advantage of the spirit. And it is never higher than when the Aggies pour out onto the field following the closing comments by the coach. And right now, Franchione has him up in that locker room, and he's running down a few things. This is a coach who's very dangerous in this situation. I think Pittsburgh probably comes in with a little bit better football team here today, but Franchione will take advantage of the home field, hope to cut down some of the mistakes that they made a week ago against Virginia Tech, and attempt to stay in it. And of course, the student body here at Aggieland, well known across the football universe as the 12th man, and Coach Franchione getting ready now to turn this team loose after their first loss of the season in his era up at Virginia Tech. And you will hear 80,000 plus explode here as the Aggies pour onto the field for an important match against Pittsburgh. This will set the tone for the entire season, probably for both the Aggies and certainly the Pittsburgh Panthers. And here they come. Harris is the head coach of the Pitt Panthers and coach last week against Toledo it was a spread offense caused you all sorts of problems another one this time with Texas A&M a little more athletic go quarterback how do you deal with it all well we, we got to uh, leverage the ball better than we did last week and obviously we got to tackle better good luck coach thank you very much Jack Walt Harris and Pittsburgh winning the toss and they have deferred so the Aggies and Reggie McNeil will have the first possession in this somewhat humid Saturday afternoon, Dennis Franchione, his first year here at Aggieland, moved to take this job from Alabama. And his team will go on offense first. David Abdul with the ball on the tee, rips it to the end zone, and it'll come out on the 20-yard line. So, you know, we have uh, talked a lot about sophomore quarterback Reggie McNeil, 6'2", 199 pounds, and uh, let's meet the young man. What's up? I'm Reggie McNeil, sophomore quarterback, and my favorite quarterback in the NFL is Michael Vick. And why not? He plays a little bit like Michael Vick. Like Michael, he could throw it on the run, although he is not left-handed. Reggie, the right-hander, coming up now, under center. Derek Farmer, starting tailback for them, even though Courtney Lewis is the leading rusher, the inside handoff to Farmer, and he is ripped down by the middle of that as Claude Harrier steps over, and we take a look at the Outback Steakhouse starting lineup. 
This unit allowed four sacks last week against Virginia Tech, so they must tighten things up a little bit. We told you that the freshman, Courtney Lewis, is the leading rusher, even though Derek Farmer started the game. Now the Toledo lesson spread the field, so they will try to emulate that. Jamar Taylor, incidentally, is playing today. Back at the good graces of the coaching staff. Practiced and practiced well all week. Did not make the trip up to Vontaine. McNeil showing option coming down the line. Short of the 30-yard line that time. Now our Panther defense. Small but quick, and Harriet already has one tackle. To his credit, recruited out of the state of Florida. Harris has been active recruiting talent down there. The defensive ringleader is middle linebacker Lewis Moore. He'll relay the signals to the defensive unit. And the group that is under the gun here today again. They could not shut Toledo down. And they'll see what they can do. And hopefully Moore and his unit, as far as Pittsburgh backers are concerned, can stand firm here on their first third down with Courtney Lewis. Now set back at tailback, and McNeil backs away to take a look at that defense. And M started with the spread, but now third and short. Using the fullback, and he has stopped short of the 30-yard line, so the Panthers not surprised by the inside man getting the handoff that time, and for Shunnis. Number 96, Vince Kershaw making the stop there. It hasn't been Pittsburgh's rush defense that have given them problems. They, the last four teams that have played against this Pitt defense, has rushed for under 100 yards. It's been tackling after the catch that has been their problem. These gates back pretty now. 2 2 Ferguson set to return for the Panthers. He's standing at their 26 yard line and uh, going to take it. Texas A and M bounce on inside the 20 yard line. So Cody Skates, who returned to the lineup after missing a couple of games because of an injury, just got a bouncer for a 55 yarder, and they'll take it. And so now Rod Rutherford, the senior quarterback, number one in the nation in passing efficiency, getting ready to come on the field and let's meet the Panther quarterback. Hello, I'm Rod Rutherford, and I currently lead the nation in passing efficiency. Last year, they lost a tough two-point game, went for the two-point conversion in the fourth quarter, and failed. So Rutherford under center, slot formation is off to the left. His ace is Larry Fitzgerald, one of the best in all of college football as his wide receiver. And they have come with their inside game, Juwan Walker, who has replaced the injured Brandon Myrie here today. Scott Stick came, knocked him down, and here's the outback. Steakhouse lineup. John Shaw, who has played guard and center, will start today at center. And Myrie, of course, not starting because of an injury. Ferguson's father told us a tender ankle, and that's the reason why Jawan Walker, number 34, is in the lineup. Second down and seven, and a shotgun look for Rutherford. It's the left hander. Aggies don't get to him. And incomplete on his first pass of the game. If we take a look at this Aggie defense, Larry Fitzgerald, the intended receiver. They are learning the 4-3 for years under R.C. Slocum. The 3-4 was the tradition here in Aggie land. So filling those lanes, maintaining your gaps, a little bit of a different learning exercise. And they are desperately missing Jared Morris, hoping that Stacane and some of their youngsters step up in middle linebacker. And when your safety is the nation's second leading tackler, good for Jackson Appel, but bad for your team because it means your linebackers are not making enough stops. Third down and seven for Rutherford and the Panthers. There's that 4-3, four, 4 down lineman for the Aggies that you can shoot. Pocket holes, incomplete. And again, they tried to pick up Larry Fitzgerald. And so it is three and out against Rutherford and the Panthers here. And Brent, they had a bus coverage on Larry Fitzgerald that time, going right down the middle of the field. No one really covered him on that play. They were trying to play a combo. Pittsburgh, Walt Harris's teams crossed their receivers, and he pops out all alone. Andy Lee back to punt. Averaging 47 yards a punt, and he has nailed five inside the 20-yard line. Jason Carter, the return man. Dennis Fraccione has always put a lot of emphasis on his special teams. Takes a high 
high hop. Field goal at the 37 yard line. So Jason Carter, one of the A backs in Montreal's terminology, gets it up around the midfield strike. No score. Texas AM. First down now for the Pittsburgh Panthers. Running back, Walker is at tailback. A conservative play call on first down. And the Aggies ready, and they jump on it. Play fake by Rutherford from the end zone. High and complete. First down at the 16-yard line. So here's what uh, head coach Walt Harris said about what they had to do to win the game. We had a bad game on defense. We got to get our confidence back. We got to get our swagger back. And we got to play good on defense. Offensively, you know, we just got to got to make it happen on, on all the downs that were out there and especially make it happen on third down. Well, they made it happen a little bit earlier. That time is Larry Fitzgerald. One of the best of the country makes his first catch of the game. And they were just a little short. And they marked it down of that first down. So make it third and one for the Panthers. Rutherford off the play fake, has time, gonna go deep. Fitzgerald double covered. Fitzgerald goes up and there's the penalty fly. Wow. So they get the penalty, they'll get the automatic first down. Byron Jones, the defensive back, number 11 covering. That ball was so well thrown. Fitzgerald running the post, man-on-man -man coverage, but good coverage. Jones is right on his hip. The ball is thrown. Jostles, yes, his right arm hooked. Fitzgerald's right arm, and that was a good call. Only a 15-yard penalty in college football. Just a bit of panic at the end of that play by Byron Jones. He was right there in coverage and then gave a little tug on the right arm of Fitzgerald. So the crew marking off the uh, penalty of Brent just outside the Panthers 30-yard line. It'll be first down. Two things accomplished there, Brent. The first down, obviously, but also a message to AM. Don't single cover this guy. Keep your safety back. That should open the running game for Pitt. The Aggies let a chance, a scoring chance escape, and now it's the Panthers' turn trying to drive out. First down for Rutherford. Straight back. Nobody open. So Rutherford picks up about a yard before he is out of bounds on the right side. The defense doing a good job with Everett Smith from Compton, California, stringing it out. Early in Rod Rutherford's career, he would always tuck that ball down and make plays with his legs. Now he's matured. He's reading it. When you talk to the pit people, they say he's not forcing the ball. He's not giving up on a play before he has a chance to scramble. He's waiting and waiting and a much better cerebral quarterback than he was in his first couple seasons. Fitzgerald comes out to the left. Two wide receivers are off to the right. They almost collide on the end of the round. 45 midfield. And breaking free, Terrell Allen, number 80. A 34-yard end around. Allen for the first down, and now the Panthers are in business. Terrell Allen is going to run the reverse, but number one, Larry Fitzgerald, is going to come down and get a block on the play. The pit offense serving notice that all of their skill players, players will be involved. There's Fitzgerald downfield, either catching the ball or making the offense go this time with the block. Ball just inside the 35-yard line for the Panthers. Their first opportunity of the day. They show that fake again, and Rutherford buys time, goes in down. Fitzgerald goes in the air. Touchdown! He's done it again. Larry Fitzgerald, the sophomore, and now it is 10 consecutive games that he has caught a touchdown pass. Oh, my. Brent, I thought Rutherford waited too long, but you know what? He just has great confidence. Here's both the quarterback and the receiver. He waits and he waits and says, you know what? 
my guy's better than your two guys. I'm going to throw it up and look at that impeccable timing, catches it at the highest point, and that was a tremendous drive. Walt Harris has coached a lot of great wide receivers, but he says Fitzgerald has some of the best ball skills that he has ever seen, and the Panthers miss an extra point. David Abdul can't put up the seventh point for Pittsburgh. Will that come back to haunt them? We shall see, but what a catch by number one. Dad was a heck of a defensive lineman back at Finger High School in Chicago when I was there. When I was up there, Jack, and uh, he has to be awfully proud of Larry Fitzgerald, who is a sophomore now. Rutherford dropping back into the shotgun on first and ten. Rutherford, after a fake, keeps it. Slices for a first down at the 32-yard line. He asked the people what's a little bit different with this pit offense than in the past, and this is a wide receiver coming in here, and you fake and run the option to the outside. Is not as many this year as compared to last year designed runs for Rutherford, but you can see that one was designed. That was an option, and Rutherford, Rutherford very comfortable running that ball. Freshman Tay Tay Thompson seeing his first action of the season for the Aggies. So again, uh, because of that injury suffered at middle linebacker, the uh, Aggies are taking a look at different personnel. Jack, what's the situation? What's the problem? Now? Well, Brent, how many times? Well, you don't wear contacts, so you've never experienced this. Rod Rutherford lost his contact out there, had to call time out there. Now putting a replacement contact in. Got to tell you guys, that's why I wear just plain old glasses. <laughs> Luke Getze is the backup quarterback. He started the opening game when Rutherford was suspended for the opener. It was only three for 11 in that game, but you can see how valuable Rutherford is to this offense. Good time out, I think. So Walt Harris with a few words for Rutherford will bring it out here now, leading by six. Walt Harris. Had a fabulous career, which started out west at the University of Pacific, where he was a defensive back. And the folks, guess who he played for out there? His first coach was none other than Buddy Ryan, coordinated that school's defense. And Walt was a player out there. First down and ten. Walker straight ahead into Aggie Land for about a yard and a half. David Ross. Time remaining in the first quarter. Pittsburgh scores on a Fitzgerald touchdown. Panthers miss the extra point. Need eight yards, and when you need that many, do not overlook the tight end, Chris Wilson. He is a very active tight end. He complements Fitzgerald very, very well. Walt Harris loves to use the twin formation, one of the few in college football that still features it. No way. Aggies jump the run. The four rushmen get him, and Johnny Jelly of uh, Houston nearby makes the stop. That's a great name, Johnny Jelly. <laughs> and that has to good, look good to AM fans, that front four dominating at the line of scrimmage. That's really the difference here, it seems to me. Don't have the great linebackers, the defensive line not making the plays, and still learning in the 4 3 defense to not just cover up for linebackers, but actually attack and make plays themselves. Now, number one to the bottom of your screen. Split out. Need 11 yards to keep this going. They show one corner on him. The safety eye to the right. He's coming over the top. Now there's the double team. So Rutherford comes back deep. He's got Fitzgerald loose. And he overthrew him by a yard. And Fitzgerald was wide open that time. If Rutherford had just pulled the string a little bit, he'd have walked in for his second touchdown. Watch this pattern. Here's the double coverage right here. They're going to bracket number one right here. When you're a good receiver, you learn how to beat the double coverage. Watch this route. Comes in, reads the coverage, comes in, and goes. Two guys, runs right by him, and this should have been a touchdown. What a nice read by Fitzgerald and Rutherford to beat the bracket coverage. Andy Lee punting, and Jason Carter standing back on the Aggies 25-yard line. Beautiful punt. Back to the nine-yard line. 
Dandy. Hunt has fumble. And they've got it. The Panthers recover it. So Rutherford as Lewis Moore recovers his second fumble of the game. Lewis Watch Moore, the Lewis Moore now. Number 48, the middle linebacker on defense. He's starting, but he still plays special teams. He strips it and gets it. That's not a bad way to do it. Last week we saw punt returns by Antonio Perkins for touchdowns. Now you see coverage of a punt return. Strip it and get it. That's the way to do it for Lewis Moore. Huge turnover. Fitzgerald's off to the right in the slot as they continue to move him around the formation. Walker filling in for the injured Myrie as the tailback. Play fake, left the third incomplete, and now he's a little bit off the target. Second down and ten now. Here's Chris Wilson, the fast tight end that Brent was talking about. He can get deep. They bring that end around again, Allen. And this time the Aggies smack it. A one-yard gain, and Jones says no way. Without Myrie, you can see that Pittsburgh is trying to find ways to run the ball in different situations. Second and ten here. Here's Fitzgerald. Going deep, running great routes, this time stiffing up a la Chris Carter, blocking downfield. Guy he watched for the Minnesota Vikings. He was a ball boy. His father was then a writer in Minneapolis, and uh, so young Fitzgerald was one of the ball boys, and uh, he confronted Chris Carter, and to this day, they're very close. Fitzgerald talks to him on the telephone. Third down at nine. Rutherford got the middle. Complete at the one yard line, and it'll be fourth down coming up. Rutherford has been a little bit off, or this should be another touchdown for Pitt. Perfect read. Chris Wilson, the tight end, was the fellow who had broken free inside the five yard line that time, and so David Abdul trots onto the field. And remember now, he missed an extra point. So that's why we're sitting on a 6 nothing lead here. The putter, Andy Lee, will put it down, and this will be all around about a 46-yard field goal. Make it 45. We'll be closer to the 35-yard line. This time, he's good. So he misses the extra point, then hits the field goal, but there is a flag. It's against the Aggies. It's good. Put it up. So it is a 9-0 score on the Abdul field goal. Uh, could Pitt decline this penalty? Running into the kicker by the defense. The penalty is declined. Take the field points. goal is good. And the Aggies trail Pitt. 9-0. Reveille trying to stay cool here today. They got a little ice over there on the sideline. Wiping Reveille down. Maybe they get an opportunity. Third down and one. Eighth play of this drive coming. That option look has been successful. Late pitch. Picked off. And out of bounds goes Derek Farmer. So it's first and goal coming up for the Aggies. And uh, right now, there it is the option look, which has troubled the pit defense the most. It's the whole package. You are right. And now they've zero. And watch the fullback right here. Keith Joseph come out here and get the good block. And Reggie McNeil does a nice job of pitching that ball forward. They get outside. They don't pitch it backward. They pitch it wide. That gets them past the defense. You see so many option teams that pitch that ball backwards and they have to get the ground. This is perfect relation between the running back and the quarterback. 14 yards for Farmer. Lewis replaces him. Ball in the red zone again. And a penalty. Marker comes flying just prior to the snap. And uh, five yards will be marched off against the Aggies. So it's 9 nothing. Prior to the snap, ball start on the offense. Five-yard penalty remains first down. So what a difference. The all-out option with the skill of McNeil. What happened? 
at the quarterback position is making here today. And again, when you talk to Dennis Franchione, when you're in his office and uh, he, he's a wonderful conversationalist about football, he knows a lot about the history, knows a lot about what's going on. When you talk to him about your system, what do you like to do? He likes to bend to the skills that he has on the Absolutely. field. Now, he knows how talented a runner McNeil is, so they put the option in to take advantage of that, and that's just simply intelligent coaching. From the shotgun, a sliding catch at the 18-yard line, so it'll be second and long. Tim Van Zandt, his second catch of the game. Any sport, baseball, basketball, hockey, ride them. That's what Pittsburgh's doing. They're riding Larry Fitzgerald. Four wideouts on the field with Neal. Going to throw the fade wide open. Touchdown, Aggies. Jamar Taylor, who did not make the trip to Blacksburg for the Virginia Tech game because he had missed a couple of practices and came back this week to practice hard for Coach Franchione as the touchdown catch. Watch how he turns around the corner back that time. Bernard Lay, the ball is thrown. Nice patience by Taylor. He just didn't run up the field. He set up the bump and run and then went out for the fade pass. Not in a hurry, just nice patience. The play was there. Todd Pegram. He hasn't missed a field goal yet this year. He'll leave alone an extra point. And he makes this a two-point game right now. Don't settle for a slow computer. Chris Moore, who was shaken up on that play, making the stop. Fourth and inches, and uh, they come out now after the timeout, and they said, let's go ahead with Todd Pegram, set up for the field goal with Francione. You never know. That's right. This would be a 31-yarder, however, if he elects to kick it. Remember, he's perfect on the season. He has not missed yet. And he's still perfect. He is 7 of 7, and Todd Pegram kicks the Aggies into their first lead of the game. 10-9 here with nine minutes to go in the first half. Well, the story of the game for me has been Reggie McNeil throwing the ball and running the ball with the option has just kept this pit defense who tackled poorly against Toledo to continue to tackle poorly in this football game. Only been able to get the ball. Pittsburgh has to Larry Fitzgerald twice and a woefully underthrown ball to Fitzgerald when Pitt should have scored first and goal. Well, now it's up to Rutherford, who is only three of nine here in the uh, first half. He does have that one nice touchdown catch by by Fitzgerald. And Walt Harris would like to get his quarterback settled down. He just feels a little rattled. He's uh, had to use all three of the timeout. He doesn't look smooth like he has to us in, uh, in several of the tapes that we've watched of the Panthers. And I'm sure Walt is concerned, wants to get him settled down, and uh, wants to get Larry Fitzgerald back in this game. And, of course, they are without their number one running back this year, and that's uh, Myrie, who is out uh, with an injury. And it was it was actually Larry Fitzgerald Sr. who told us about the injury just before the game, and we would not even have known. But uh, Pops upstairs being the good reporter, and uh, he came over to Gary and me and said, you know, Myrie, uh, <laughs> don't know if he can go. He's got that ankle. He's, thanks, thanks. You now we know what uh, what's going on down there as we talk to Dad. And uh, another deep pickoff. This will come out on the, uh, the 20-yard line. And uh, yeah, we asked young Fitzgerald, what's it like having your father up in the press box for every game? That's uh, real comforting to know that uh, your dad is up there every week with you and, uh, you know, he's going to give you positive feedback, you know, um, after the game, regardless of what the outcome is. So, you know, that's great to have him up there. And, uh, you know, my mom is sorely missed, definitely. But, you know, it's great to have a father that's so supportive. What a young man he is, folks. So, so very, very impressive. He would have been wearing a, a suit and tie for that interview if we had not asked him specifically to put on the uh, the Panther jersey. Here comes number one now, out wide in the formation. You need to throw him the ball. Even if he's got double coverage, he can defeat it and show it. They fake rolling hard to the left, looking for him, and they come to the underneath man for the first down. A gain of about 15 yards on the play. Chris Wilson, the talented tight end, and because of Fitzgerald and his acrobatic catches around the country, Chris Wilson, Gary, is one of the most underrated tight ends we've looked at. Yes, because he can get the exact type of tight end that college football is going to. You love it. Oh, I actually do. I love those tight ends that can stretch the field. He had Ricky Dudley at Ohio State. Uh, Walt Harris did remember and he made that offense go with Dudley over there same type of guy get deep from the tight end spot really forces those defenses to declare looking for another big play first down 
Pittsburgh now back in that shotgun look. Three wide receivers and before the snap, and they're now he's complaining and uh, goes quickly over to the sideline as they sort out the penalty here. The time was coming down on Rutherford. He has a clean shot at it uh, out beyond the goalpost. The remember, they're out of timeouts. Remains first down. Brent, that was shotgun that time, and uh, Rutherford gave the foot that time to the center, but Scholl was too slow to snap the ball. Watch it. The foot signifies the play. Lift Shull. it, and Scholl's late. The guard and the inside handoff, but nothing doing as the Aggies were ready, and Jasmine jumps it. Second down and 14. The 25-yard line, Bryant Singleton, the sophomore DB from Galveston, Texas. And m with their nickel package that time, and obviously he comes right off here. Now watch, this is a one-handed tackle coming right to the outside, right there. Comes around, blocked, not well, by Chris Wilson. He just reaches out with his right hand and just grabs down. Right the what a play. Third and a bunch. Hey, this is the one now you throw deep to Fitzgerald and let him try to jump up and catch the ball. Maybe you can still a first down down the field. They want Rutherford to hurry. It's down to four seconds. They move him up under center. Great time. Goes middle deep, incomplete. He overthrew the wide receiver and the covering DBs that time going for Princell Rockenbrough. I think that whole series was changed by that delay of game on first down right there. That put it in the advantage of AM and it never got back. Terrence Thomas will attempt to haul back this punt by Andy Lee with seven and a half minutes to go. The Aggies starting to dominate this game, aren't they? 35. I mean, after the 43 yard. It's a now first and ten for Reggie McNeil. He's been the man of the match so far, if you will. Has the Aggies up by a point. Nice play fake again and eludes pressure. Dances, puts it down on the ground, but I believe he was down. Yes, he was. We're signaling that uh, McNeil was down on the play as we check in with Jack. Well, Brent, if you asked uh, Paul Rhodes, the defensive coordinator for the Pitt Panthers, to define his defense, he would say one word, green. His guys are young. They're still work at, working on grasping concepts about his defense. He says, but they love to play hard. He says they go at it 110%. They swarm all around the field. Just sometimes they swarm the wrong place. The cluster three wide out to the right side here. Jamar Taylor, who has been active, is one of the three wide for the Aggies on second down and long. And they throw it to him, and Taylor does the rest. Stepped out of bounds as he crossed midfield. This is the true bubble screen. No one is over this bubble. There's the bubble right there. So you throw it to him, you get a couple blocks to the outside. It's like a wide sweep. That is the bubble screen from shotgun and runs so well. You get it to an athlete on the edge and let him run with the ball. Third down and short. The ball is uh, spotted at the 48 yard line. Tremendous about of offense, variety of offense in this package by AM. Don't you think, Brent? Absolutely. And uh, let's see if they come up with the option look or something else from McNeil, who's under center. And uh, now he's going to call the timeout again. <laughs> so the Aggies. We'll talk about it, and uh, everybody's exhausted. We know we won't, we won't have any more timeouts this afternoon. We know that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> got, they're not taking any into the locker room here. And, uh, a beautiful new locker room facility it is. That's, uh, just off to the side here. Stuck in student loan debt? Are your student loans in default? Or maybe you just can't. In the best physical condition of any staff in the country. Well, up in Austin, and we'll be up there next week for K-State in Texas. they got a beautiful new facility. Not to be outdone, the Aggies have come right back. And the rivalry down here in uh, Texas continues, and uh, certainly Oklahoma is part of that now. Oklahoma has already raided the state of Texas for a great high school prospect and quarterback, Brett Beaumont, will be going up there. And... Uh, 
Let's take a look now. We, we, we mentioned uh, Pittsburgh State up in Kansas. Look at this now. High school coach to start of Missouri, then Kansas, stayed there for a while. Southwestern Texas State, then over to New Mexico. That was uh, the big stop. And then in TCU and uh, Alabama and uh, here to Texas A&M. Third and short. Slips it out to the left. And easy first down. Lewis to the 32 for a freshman. What a patient runner this young man is. He's out of the Houston area, very close by. I'm sure he's got friends and relatives watching this game, but but he appears to have a very bright future here. Today. You know, I'm just so impressed with Reggie Mill. I mean, Reggie McNeil is, you know, I gave him arm strength, but I didn't give him a check for touch. Don't you think he deserves a check for touch early in the game? Absolutely. He has been accurate and throwing the ball wonderfully out of the pocket. He's 10 of 14 today. Yes. 173 yards with a... Uh, we're going to get a one. I'm, I'm betting sideline warning. What do you think? Sideline warning. <laughs> hey, I got Against it. Pittsburgh. <laughs> that is your first warning. Here's my original uh, scouting report. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give a little check over here. Give them both a check right there. So now it's three to three. Okay. Well, Rutherford is yet to show us his touch. I can't take him off. I can only add. I, there's oh, nothing I, I can. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> First down yeah. now, but uh, Rutherford being a senior, still plenty of time left in this game. He'll show us what he's got. First down and 10. And McNeil on the move. Hole opens in the middle, and he takes it to the 28-yard line. Reggie McNeil. <laughs> Hell, you go back and you ask, Reggie, when did you know that you wanted to be a quarterback? Actually, it was when I was little. I used to throw my bottles. And from then, my, my, my mama, I always told him she thought I was going to be a quarterback. He had touch <laughs> even then, folks. <laughs> Did he make them spiral or were they end over enders? You know? Second down at six. Aggie's up a point. Is that pitch now to Lewis. And the freshman takes it down inside the red zone. So Ferguson defends the play for the Panthers and. Uh, Lewis now has carried seven times for 54 yards. Can't talk enough about the relationship. That's why this option is so good. Watch this back is almost every time in front. That ball is actually leading that running back upfield. He catches it like a perfect pass. You almost could be given completions to Reggie McNeil on all those options. That is really that execution, the way it's being taught and executed is a reason that option's working so effectively. And you know, Moore is still out at middle linebacker for the Panthers. So that's that's missing their leader down there. Inside handoff to Lewis to the 13-yard line. Marcioni's like Dick Vermeil. If you've got a hot back, keep him going. Lewis is stopped this time. And, of course, Priest Holmes, who is out of the uh, University of Texas, is the go-to runner with the Kansas City Chiefs. They stand at 3-0. and And Francioni, when you look back at his career and what he did with LaDainian Tomlinson, who is now with the San Diego Charger, it has to be a very impressive package for a running back like Young Peterson, who is a senior down there. I think it's Palestine uh, High School, a couple hours away from uh, from Texas A&M line. But again, the Longhorns are in on him. Uh, Oklahoma has come down. Miami has come into Texas. I mean, he's the real deal. But Lewis, it's like he's going to have a wonderful future here. On third down, here's McNeil. Middle open. And that time he misfired. He had a walk-in touchdown for Keith Joseph, the fullback. And Reggie threw it just a little bit too high. One of his few mistakes of the half. And the crowd uh, saw him break wide open in, uh, you know, in agony. They had a touchdown, but uh, the young man's had a heck of a half. Clint Sessions, number 17, the middle linebacker who's playing for Lewis Moore, is actually the guy that busted. He's a true freshman, and you see Reggie McNeil. You don't get a guy that was that was like a long handoff. He could have pitched that ball to him, and he gives up a sure seven points. Let's see if Pigram can make it eight of eight this year. This is a 30-yarder. Perfect on the season, and he's still perfect. He's now eight of eight. That was a huge stop, though. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't a stop. A huge miss because that's a touchdown. You know what? Now, Pitt needs to get the ball to their difference maker. Larry Fitzgerald has not had that ball thrown to him since the interception. I look for Walt Harris to try to find ways to get the ball in the hands of his number one playmaker right now because they can't run the ball. Last week, Fitzgerald caught 12 passes for over 200 yards. He only has two today. 
They need to get him the ball. And he has a kind of pass, as Gary pointed out. This quarter. Right. Remember the last throw was the interception. Cody Skates, the punter with the ball on the tee to kick it off. Arlen Ferguson back deep for the Panthers. They'll bring it out. Out of bounds at the 21 yard line is Terrell Allen. Hey Brent, I had my eyes on number 12, Blake Kendrick, the 12th man. Watch him come down this time. Maybe this is why he got the jersey. Middle line, you're oh, oh, oh. He had a few more pops like that. <laughs> He'll be a full scholarship. This is the oh, third man. week in a row that that 12th man has had the jersey, and that's the spirit that French Leon wants to inspire here. In the inside handoff for uh, for the Panthers with uh, 310 to go here in the first half somewhat conservative as they uh, they open up this series and Rutherford no question about it has struggled he's only four of 11 he's kept the ball three times and rushed for seven yards Fitzgerald the two catches for 45 yards of the and the one touchdown and uh, they are really keeping him under wraps they have got to try to get the ball to number one yep and you know an A&M is going to double cover him. They've got the bracket looking over there right now, and they will double him. Safety comes up over the top to bracket, and they keep Walker on the ground short of that first down, so it'll be third and short. And Appel, the second leading tackle in the nation, up to the safety spot to make the tackle. But, you know, because we haven't called his name that much here today, that's good news for the Aggies. It means that the... Defensive linemen and the linebackers are starting to make plays. This used to be under R.C. Slocum, linebacker U, and it has really dropped off down here. Third down and one. I rough the third is stuffed. Not a very good looking option play there. No, and, and it seemed to me that the, the offensive line jumped off on the play just prior to the snap. And again, Ruffleford just doesn't Rob Ruffer just doesn't look right. I agree with you. He looked slow. Did they beat the snap count? Everything kind of happened at the same time. Inside play by Jolly just beats the center inside. You know, not having their starting center seems to be start stopping pits again this week. Thomas is swallowed up at the 27-yard line, and Reggie McNeil will come out here with the lead. It was good the other night, wasn't it, Gary? Yep. Where did A.C., our friend down here, the S.R.D. Rudy's, take? wasn't it Rudy's? Wow. <laughs> I think it was. Prior to the they, snap. They hear me, they'll send some over for lunch. <laughs> Offense, five-yard <laughs> penalty, remains first down. Well, we're talking... Watching John and the, the fellas back in New York give us the scores. Man, some of that brisket and some of that, you know, that corn that you had, the beans. Oh, oh, oh. It's a, it's a, I, I'm ready, but I'm ready to, to get into this uh, second half here. I think Pittsburgh would like to reload, you know, at halftime. It's 13 to 9. They just don't feel well about things the way they've started out here. First down and 15. McNeil back in that, uh, back in the shotgun. He's been the two way threat here. Got time, fired, and caught almost on the ricochet that time as Riley almost had one come his way. Not a good throw, and it was deflected. So now it is McNeil's turn to be a little off with uh, with his throws, and it's second and 15. Had two guys open on that play and threw behind both of them that time. Both double slant from the outside, cutting inside, throws the ball a little bit behind. Jim, Jamar Taylor tipped. And almost caught, but not caught. Second down and 15 <laughs> for the Aggies. Three wide. Two of them off to the quarterback's right. Four down linemen for the Panthers. Stretched it out. Swallowed up at the 19-yard line, and you can see that uh, Harriet, the defensive end, hustling in to uh, clean up the play in that backfield. He's a fine defensive end for the Panthers, and uh, I wonder if it's a little bit mixed up like groin or... Uh, that could be cramping, too. Yeah, it could be. Uh, Jack Alou told us he was warm down there on the field, and uh, the training staff immediately to his side. Out of Belle Glade, Florida, which is uh, not far from the uh, West Palm Beach area, 
and, and an area that produces one outstanding football player after another. One of the most prolific areas in the country is uh, Harriet uh, talks off the field now he has to well, that, stay out for at least one play looks like he's okay well, that's what fatigues you though you're chasing around a quarterback in that shotgun and if you don't substitute him paul Rhodes said he had to do it over last week against toledo defensive coordinator paul Rhodes said i would have substituted more it's hard to take out your starters but against the spread you must do it and third and 18 you wonder if french only won't play it conservatively and then punt it away for the last minute and uh here is farmer dancing in the backfield and that's exactly what they've elected to do right but no send the punter out because there's no timeouts over there for rutherford and the uh, panthers what they will have to do obviously is a double team fitzgerald and uh, a couple of big plays and you see how the panthers are like to still the uh, area the clock is winding down here toward 30 seconds well i think in pittsburgh right now should go for the block uh, punt on this play no i have enough time to really set up a return and try to steal three points well, you know, Virginia Tech poured in on young skates in the rainstorm. Uh, that was a week ago from last Thursday. And he danced for a first down. There was some play as he gets this one off now. And it'll be caught fair catch at the 35. That's Ferguson putting it down. At the 33. So now here comes Rutherford with uh, Kneel down play. They've elected just to take it on into the uh, locker room here. Trailing 13 9 with uh, the crowd here in attendance. Pleased with what they've seen. And um, the Aggies have to feel that they should and could have had more. Let a couple of them uh, get away. Walt Harris leads his uh, Panthers. And we check in now with uh, Jack Aru. Coach, as good as you guys are playing, it's woulda, coulda, shoulda. You coulda had two seven-pointers instead of three-pointers. Well, that's, you're certainly right. We hurt ourselves uh, on a few plays, but we've made some nice plays, too. And our defense played reasonably solid in the first half, so we're going to cling to the positive things at this point. Do you intend to change anything in the second half? I, well, I don't think there's a lot to change. Just don't make any foolish turnovers like we had uh, on the fourth down down here and keep playing hard and doing the things we've done. Got to try to get the ball into his hands. Now, Pittsburgh will have the first possession. Again, we told you that Larry's father is upstairs in the press box. Uh, Jack and Roots joined him. We're going to go up there momentarily and uh, and hear and see what his thoughts are about this game and how they can get the ball into the hands of his son here in the second half and this stage a comeback. And uh, just so Jack knows, father does a radio show with Dante Culpepper, and I'm hanging on every word to find out if Culpepper is going to play this week for the Vikings. So I'm going to put a question there with my friend Jack. He'll find out for all my NFL buddies. And now with the ball on the tee on the 35-yard line, Pittsburgh will handle it for the first time here in the second half. Coming out to the 20. Let's go to Jack and Mr. Fitzgerald. All right, we'll find out, Larry. You talk to, to Dante Culpepper all the time. Those little broken bones in his back. He did practice. What's the story? I think he's going to play. He says uh, he wants to play. He's the leader of that football team. They're 3-0 and when he's playing. Let's talk for a moment about your son. He was really good in the first quarter, and then all of a sudden, Rod's not throwing to him anymore. And what are your concerns there? Well, I think they got to get the running game going a little better uh, so they can rest their defense some because Texas A&M is obviously taking it to him with the running game. I'll talk to you in a second, Brent. All right, Jack, thank you. Very good analysis by Pops. He was an excellent uh, high school football player in the Chicago area at Finger High School, defensive line. Here comes Ruffin. They're going to put it up right away. And there goes his son for the reception. And back we go to Jack. Can you explain just how important it is for you to be present at every one of your son's games, especially with the recent loss of his mom? Well, it's very important. Uh, Larry needs support. Uh, he's been able to shield much of the pain that he's carrying. And uh, it's something that we have to do as a family to support him. Brent, that's the side we never see, the family side of football. Yeah, exactly. Nice job, Jack. There's some good barbecue off there to the side of the press box. Get yourself a lunch. We'll talk to you in a little bit. Here, here comes that running game that uh, Pops talked about as uh, Jamal Walker ran right straight ahead. Uh, Jack, I know that uh, you were invited inside the uh, the Pittsburgh locker room at halftime. And uh, what did Coach Walt Harris have to say? Well, that was really animated. They broke down into offense, defensive, off offensive line. They all talked. But what Walt Harris Harris did is he got with his quarterbacks and specifically Rob Rutherford talked to him very quietly there was no emotion from Walt Harris's side I talked wrote up with the other coaches and they said they just want to calm Rod down in this second half all right he uh, incidentally I missed call Walker that was polite getting his first carry of this football game and then they come back with Walker on this carry 
So uh, they use a one-two punch at running back, and uh, Jackson Appel, that safety, makes a stop, but it is a 19-yard gain, Garrett. Really like the way they started out the half. They established Larry Fitzgerald outside on a one-on-one -on -one pass route, then attacked the middle of the field, and then went to the tailback. Good adjustments from uh, halftime. You get your wide receiver involved with the passing game, and then that forces those safeties out of the box, and you can run it. Fitzgerald is off to the right side of the formation for Pittsburgh. And Rutherford makes a play fake. Looks for him, and he's got it at the 30-yard line. A 13, 14-yard gain for the first down, and Jones making the stop. He reminds me so much of his almost idol, I guess, Chris Carter. The way he works the field. Double coverage does not bother him at all. Two guys, hey, what's better, having one great guy cover you or two bad guys cover you? Larry Fitzgerald just says it doesn't bother me at all. Go down there, stop and throw easy throws from Rutherford instead of deep throws. Carl Torbush over on the A&M sideline, the defensive coordinator, he is going to have to readjust here as the Panthers are sharply moving down the field. Here comes Rutherford on the bootleg. Crashes inside the 20-yard line for the first and 10. Rod Rutherford coming back strong here in the early stages of the second half. I think he lost his contact again. I po he pointed to it as you look at Carl Torbush right there. I don't know what he can do, though, Brent. Can he put three guys on him? <laughs> Not much else to do. Running a beautiful bootleg away from Fitzgerald, and they run found running room for yeah. Rutherford that time. It was a 12-yard gain. The ball is in the red zone now for the Panthers, attacking here for what would be the go-ahead touchdown if they can finish it. he got to run. He doesn't have an eye. Play fake. Stands tall. Fires. Incomplete. And that time, the Aggies had coverage of Pell, and there was a late flag. A late flag comes flying on the play. See, when you go against double coverage, oftentimes you can run your route against the safety. And... Appel that time, the safety is going to have to cover the big receiver, something he's not used to doing. Pass interference on the defense. Ball be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. Coming from the left side of your screen, another curl route coming right at Rutherford. Right over the back, he knocks the ball down, but he did come over the back. Brent, you do a lot of NBA stuff. Did he come over the back for that rebound? <laughs> Put him on the line. He shoot a couple here. 13 minutes to go. So easy, I believe, when you establish your best player on the field to distort the defense. And when Pittsburgh went away from number one, that defense could zero in on Rutherford. First down and goal was a half the distance penalty, but an automatic first down on the pass interference and the whistles before the snap. So uh, Larry Fitzgerald. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. So it stays first down after the penalty. They send in an extra wide receiver, the Panthers do, for this set. The ball is back on the 13-yard line. Broken blow out to the right of the formation. Rutherford stands tall and throws a one hopper in the direction of Fitzgerald. And it'll be second down. I think Dan LeCarte that time got pushed back into Rutherford's arm as he threw it, and that's why he short armed it. His strong side guard just got pushed back. Good push up front by the defense where and m and that's why that ball could not be completed. goal from the 13-yard line. Got the third hit and ripped down by Archie McDaniel, number 41. McDaniel, a very highly touted recruit, and he came here to Aggie Land. And on a play like this, he's starting to fulfill his potential. There's the mistake right there. Running back, Juwan Walker missed his blitz assignment. He went outside, the linebacker came inside, and that caused the sack. Nice. Running, excuse me, Brent, running back's job before he goes out. Look at his linebacker. Fitzgerald now to the left side of this formation. Rutherford facing a third and goal.
end zone. Diving catch down there, but he was going out of bounds. Touchdown. They give it to Broken Row. A diving reception by Princell Brockenbrough, and a beauty down there in the end zone. You only need one foot, perfectly thrown ball. Brockenbrough says if Fitzgerald can do it, I can do it. And there you see it. Both feet actually in. Now, does he hold on to the ball? Let's take a peek. Oh, yeah, those feet are in. Yeah, he held on to it, too. That's a wonderful play. David Abdul, who has missed one extra point. To boost Pittsburgh into a two point lead here. We figured to have a close one. Don't settle for a slow computer. Just go to mycleanpc.com to get your free computer diagnosis. First, we'll tell you what's slowing down your computer. Then activate the mycleanpc.com software to optimize your computer performance. I got a free diagnosis for my computer, and they told me exactly what was wrong with it. My computer is running faster and smoother than it ever has before. My computer is 100% faster. Get your free computer diagnosis at mycleanpc.com. This is a media alert from the Health Hotline. If you suffer from knee pain and you have Medicare, you may qualify to receive a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost to you with free delivery. Call now for priceless information. We do all the paperwork. If you have knee pain and are on Medicare, the Health Hotline has free information to help you get a knee brace at little or no cost to you. Call now before it's too late. Call 855-895-2834. Call now. Say hello to the bad boys. Oh, it's the team they love to hate. We want to crush you mentally. Violent knocked down by Lambert. Fight the power. Hey, it's kind of fun being a villain. What if I told you sometimes you've got to be bad to be good? ESPN Films presents a 30 for 30 film brought to you by Infinity. Bad Boys, tomorrow at 8 on ESPN. Okay, you have something new, something borrowed, and something blue. We just need to find you something old. Uh, old? It's not too late to wear my dress. Mom, we discussed this. What are you doing? It's a DSL modem. Seriously, what's older than DSL internet? You know you don't have to settle. Excuse me? For outdated internet. Time Warner Cable now offers everyday low-price internet for $14.99 a month, and it's not a promotional price. Wow, I've been waiting for this day my whole life. Oh, I remember how excited I was to marry your father. <laughs> no, I mean to get internet for $14.99. All you have to do is call 1-855-WANT-TWC. Make the better call. Call 1-855-WANT-TWC or visit TWC.com now to get everyday low-price internet for $14.99 a month. With no long-term contract, no internet data caps, and no additional services required. Time Warner Cable. Enjoy better. Guaranteed. For a driving Pittsburgh Panther team right now. Good looking drive. Keeping the ball on the ground. Helmet to helmet football. Welcome for getting time. Pulling out on first down. Waits, fires to the four-yard line. Fitzgerald with the completion. <laughs> and it'll be close to first and goal. First sure. down and goal now for the Panthers. Rutherford under center. Slips at the five-yard line. It'll be second down and goal. Yeah, that'll set it up now to go to Fitzgerald as uh, Anthony Jolly, number 97, gets that push inside and an option play. Going to run the same option quarterback keeper that they got for the first down. Actually got stepped on inside by the center, John Shaw, and that's what really stopped the play. Now they go for the fade pass. Second down, rock and roll to the right. Fitzgerald's down to the left with a corner tightening up on him there at second and goal. There it is. Throws it toward him and Fitzgerald juggled touchdown. They call it. They've got their arms in the air. He's got it. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. He was juggling the ball as he came over 
but the official standing there said right away that he had possession in the end zone for his second touchdown catch of the day. Just like the animation showed you, he contortions his body around and catches, takes two steps, and that is just wonderful ability to react to the ball. That was the stop fade, but you knew one-on-one -on -one coverage of the outside, it was impossible to stop. David Abdul. For the first time in this game, Pittsburgh opening up some daylight as they have back to back 80 yard drives to start this half. There's a distinction and beauty to a four season sunroom. It's more than the way it's built, it's the way it makes you feel. Your home is the cornerstone of your life. Create a space to rest and relax. Spend time with the people you love. Surround yourself with friends. Build your future. There are so many reasons to add light, space, and above all, value to your home. The only question is, what will you create? With our free in-home design consultation, you can start imagining now. And with prices from as little as $129 a month, now is the time to call Four Seasons. To celebrate our 40th anniversary, Four Seasons is offering free installation with any sunroom purchase. Plus, 40% off our energy-saving windows. That's 40 years of delivering beautiful, custom-built sunrooms with cutting-edge technology. Call today or visit us online and ask about our extensive range of living solutions. Four Seasons. Live. Love. Your life. Okay, you have something new, something borrowed, and something blue. We just need to find you something old. Uh, old? It's not too late to wear my dress. Mom, we discussed this. What are you doing? It's a DSL modem. Seriously, what's older than DSL internet? You know you don't have to settle. Excuse me? For outdated internet. Time Warner Cable now offers everyday low price internet for $14.99 a month. And it's not a promotional price. Wow, I've been waiting for this day my whole life. Oh, I remember how excited I was to marry your father. <laughs> no, I mean to get internet for $14.99. All you have to do is call 1-855-WANT-TWC. Make the better call. Call 1-855-WANT-TWC or visit TWC.com now to get everyday low price internet for $14.99. Larry Fitzgerald, number one, six catches now for 86 yards and two touchdowns. He was certainly helped that time by the Pittsburgh rushing game. In the first half, as you take a look at the yards per half, keep in mind that Pittsburgh ran for only 56 yards in the first half. Here in the third quarter, they've run for 80 yards already in just 12 carries, and that makes it a lot easier for wide receivers like Fitzgerald. To get a little daylight and make catches. And I think Gary's absolutely right. It reminds you of Chris Carter in that end zone. Yep. He touches it and he's got it. And what he's a model the 20. Chris, all I do is make touchdowns. <laughs> now the Aggies need to mount a rally here as we take a look at their stars. Taylor with four catches for 82 yards. McNeil is 11 of 20. Courtney Lewis had a strong first half, but he's been quiet in the second half, as it appears to me that the Pittsburgh defense has been a lot more aggressive here in the second half. They've been a little bit shorthanded. We'll see now if they can hold up here with four minutes to go still in the third quarter, and uh, Lewis comes out. He'll be the running back now for McNeil. There'll be four wide receivers on the field for the Aggies in this set. Trailing by 10, McNeil is cut off as he goes to cut back, and Andy Allen makes the tackle. Second down and 13, the Aggies trail pit by 10 points. Second down, McNeil on the roll hard to the right. Can't get anybody open. 
dances back, and it'll be third down and long now as the uh, Panthers cut him off and Pasto cleans up. And uh, here is the wide receiver, Kurd, who was injured earlier in the game. Yes, it was. First part of the game. And, uh, Obviously, uh, we wish him well with One that. One yard gain on the play as well. Look back and uh, check the spotlight here. This was the uh, first punt of the game by Andy Lee. Uh, there is Kurd uh, blocking on the uh, left side and the leg bending. Back and now it is third down for McNeil. Firing high and dropped by Jamar Taylor. Jamar Taylor had a big game in his hands. Big. It would have been a first down near midfield if he had hung on to the ball. And uh, he's been pretty reliable. And now Harriet coming back onto the field. Reggie McNeil, you can't throw it and catch it. He's just got to maintain his confidence, know that there's still a whole fourth quarter to play, and figure that his guys will catch those balls later in the half. Pitt, though, hasn't been able to be stopped in this half. So uh, game can't get away, but McNeil is still delivering the ball right on target. Walt Harris and his staff deserve a lot of credit so far for the adjustments they have made here at the intermission. Cody skates punting again, and uh, Ferguson running up has got it. 45 days Rod Rutherford will be working with a short field, and uh, we check in with uh, Jack. Jack. Brent, it's that time of day when we give you the collegiate tale of the day for Texas A&M University. 73 students from the state of Pennsylvania. The overall enrollment, though, as you said, growing. It's pretty close to 50-50. And I know you knew the distinguished alumni, including that president of Bolivia, Jorge Fiorga Ramirez. Let me tell you that I'd rather be Lyle Lovett than the president of Bolivia. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take Rip Torn. <laughs> First down and at 10. Rutherford brings the Panthers up to the line now. Jawan Walker has come alive, and they're going to keep pounding away at that middle and uh, make the Aggies stand up as yeah. they get that time. I guess we just have a difference of opinion here, Brent. I think Fitzgerald is open the running game. You think the running game's over Fitzgerald. I think when they establish that pass, it opens everything up inside. He's just a special football player. Second down at nine. Second down at nine for Rutherford, who's in his fifth year. Short drop. Fires and it is dropped, and now it'll be third down and long. And, uh, Walt Harris was asked why his quarterback stuck around for an extra year. And his comment was, you know, they're not physically ready. You know, and I can chime in with that. You know, they might have big muscles, but they're not physically mature for that level. Those are all men, grown men, um, and it's much more serious than it is in college, you know, because there's a waiver wire. And, of course, Walt was one time an assistant coach with the New York Jets, and he's very aware of that waiver wire. And uh, so now it's the Danielson offense. As uh, third and eight, Rutherford will have to come up firing. Middle's open. Dropped. And it is fourth down as Brockenborough. It's open by 15 yards. 15 yards open. And I, I think Rutherford thought Brockenborough would stop in that zone right there in the middle of the field. The ball ended up being behind him. You will see. Because Gerald goes out here and draws a lot of coverage, and Brockenborough goes to the middle, and he's wide open there. Nothing in the middle of the field. Easy pitch and catch, about 15 yards open. Ball slightly behind, and that's what gets the incompletion. So the Aggies now set to receive the Andy Lee punt. Good. Very high, the fair catch signal. And the 15-yard line as Thomas coughs up the fair catch and the Panthers now have 15 yards for another touchdown. Oh, what a mistake by the young man. See the two gunners behind and Dupree number 40 is right there to get the fumble and an uh, easy catch. Nice high soft one and unforced error that time. A drop pass and now a drop punt. A&M self-destructing here in the second half. The ball is at the Aggie 15-yard line. I formation, Walker the tailback. 
play fake. Wide open. They throw to the back and slips out. To the six yard line on that first down play, they go to polite the fullback. If you've ever coached in the NFL like Walt Harris has, you know you must establish your fullback as a wide as a receiver. That's exactly what he's done in this game, slipping that fullback out in the flat. That's the remnants of the West Coast offense that all the teams are using at the next level. Trying to take full advantage. And here's the matchup and down. Turnover. Here. Second down and one. Using polite. He comes across the five yard line. Depend on the spot. The first down marker is uh, right, just about uh, right on the five yard line. Yeah, you can see the uh, the chain gang over on that uh, far side here, and they've got it. So it is a first down and goal as the Panthers continue to pound away up 10, 23 13. Let's see, what's the strategy? Run on first, throw the fade on second, or throw it on first? Remember, they threw it on first when they got intercepted in the first quarter. This time, Fitzgerald goes out to the right side of the formation. They already cut two touchdown passes. They run option away from him to the left. And the Aggies were not fooled, and Rutherford is out of bounds at the seven-yard line. Loss of a couple of yards, perhaps. Right. Over Smith over on defensively. It ended up being just a quarterback keeper, as the Rutherford had no option to really pitch it on that play. It was just a quarterback sweep, and uh, a and just uh, strung it out to the sideline. Paul Harris, the man in charge over there. If you're Carl Dorbush now, you have to bracket number one Fitzgerald. You can't allow your corner to go one-on-one. -on -one. Second down and goal, and they will send Fitzgerald out to the right. Let's see if this guy helps. On second down and goal, throwing underneath, high juggle, goes for a touchdown. And using the fullback, Polite out of the backfield for six points. Just a wonderful play conceived by Walt Harris. You know they're going to double the outside receivers like they did, so slip that fullback right into the middle of the field. <laughs> Great catch. You don't play fullback at Pittsburgh unless you can catch the ball. Polite does it with one hand. Man, he looks like Larry Fitzgerald <laughs> juggling that it's ball. It's contagious, what isn't it? A wonderful catch that was, and it's the third touchdown pass by oh, Rutherford in this game. And my, how this game has turned completely around. I've checked that fourth yep, touchdown fourth. pass here today. Three of them, I meant, this half. <laughs> that was the third one he's fired this half. Offsides, Offside. defense, defense, penalty is penalty half the distance, distance to the goal. So the Aggies let some chances escape them in the first half. Drop pass. The Panthers regrouped behind Walt Harris, changed their strategy up. And they have come with fresh aggression. And one of the differences is firing up Juwan Walker, who had to step in there for Brandon Myrie. And he has done just that. Then, using the fullback, Polite, as a runner and a receiver. And Abdul adds that extra point. And uh, what was a very close, tight game at the half is now... A bit of a mismatch as Pittsburgh has really taken charge. There's Fitzgerald. They're thick and fade. You run your tight end off and take your fullback right underneath it. When you have a tight end that can get out, you're going to attract people. You see that safety cheating out. He's worried about Fitzgerald. There's the fullback right over the middle of the field. Pitch and catch. What a catch. Man. Oh, my. Beautifully conceived play. Instead of keeping your tight end in the block, instead of keeping your fullback in the block, just take him out there, take advantage of Fitzgerald drawing the coverage, and you have an easy design play for a touchdown. So Walt Harris orchestrated Ohio State's winning drive for the Rose Bowl against Arizona State. He was up in the booth that day. That was his last game as an assistant coach for the Buckeyes. And uh, there's a man who credits him with starting his coaching career, folks, John Gruden of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Graduate assistant, went to Walt, who was an assistant coach at Tennessee. Now that's back in 1986. And Gruden will tell you today that he might not be where he is if that man, Walt Harris, had not given him a chance as a graduate assistant down at Knoxville. So Walt Harris doing just a superb job of coaching here with these Panthers in the second half of this football game. And going man-to-man -man and congratulating the linemen in the backs 
Juan Walker and uh, and Polite have made such a huge difference with this team in the second. It's an entire, it looks like a different football team to be up here watching. Kickoff will be fielded one yard deep, and coming out now is Murphy. He's explosive. Cuts back in a little crease and stopped at the 25 yard line as the quarter. He runs out. Man, what a quarter it was. Give you a look because they're so deep down here close to the end zone of what Dustin Long is going to see when he breaks the huddle. We're going to give you a bird's eye view here. Deep in the end zone. Attacks complete. So a beautiful shot, Jack, on that pass to Terrence Murphy, the speed merchant. And on first down, a backup quarterback. Watch Dustin Long on this gutsy call here. Watch the protection. He has all day to hit an 18-yard crossing route. Look at that. That's in his own end zone. Remember, Toledo last week, Pitt was ahead 31-21 with 11 minutes to go. A little bit eerie right now. As a and still completing the ball, no pressure from that pass rush. 28 yards ricocheted and... Uh, the receiver, did he sell it? Did he make it? No, he didn't complete the line. He said Taylor, a diving attempt at that uh, at that tipped ball. So it'll be second down and 10 for the Aggies now. And uh, Dustin Long continuing at quarterback. And uh, uh, what's the situation with Reggie, Jack? Well, Brennan, it was interesting. Reggie McNeil kind of walked it off. Things looked pretty good. In fact, he saddled up close to Coach Fran, hoping to be called back in. But then they tapped Dustin Long to go in. Yeah, Dustin leading him on that last touchdown drive, picking up after the McNeil injury. Staying on there, fired high and incomplete that time. Now on third down, Long firing for the first down, the dive, they've got it. So on third down, he puts it back in Murphy's hands, and it was Murphy's dive that resulted in the first down. And that's the bugaboo for Pittsburgh last week against Toledo in the fourth quarter. Eight third down conversions Toledo got. Here's another one. This has got to be like deja vu for Pittsburgh. Here they go again. Fourth quarter, another third down conversion, and AM is still in his football game. And here's the situation from a week ago that Gary's referring to, and Dustin back again. Final uh -oh. dangerous intercepted, picked off at the 41 yard line. That interception by Malcolm Postel out of Keyport, New Jersey. A poorly thrown ball. I think he's indicating he thought the receiver was going to come back into that area for the left. Yeah, but watch him throw this ball off his back foot. Watch him just lean back, never gets his weight transferred. Oh, that is terrible technique, and it cost him. Don't settle for a slow computer. Just go to MyCleanPC.com to get your... We were talking about uh, communicating, cutting, and uh, what's going on. Nevertheless, Rutherford and the Panthers have a first down and half a field to work with here. Fitzgerald comes in motion, stops behind the left tackle now, and the running back, Walker, slips. Well, let's look at it from behind. I know as a QB, you never like to see it too many times, so Dustin, hope you don't have your VCR on on this one, but... He rolls left, doesn't have it, and then kind of fades away and just kind of lobs it over the middle. Any corner will eat that play up right now, and that one cost them. Uh, had that team moving and still in the football game until now, and now Pittsburgh will attempt to take at least three or four minutes off the clock. Fitzgerald and to the right side of the formation. They line up in that eye. Second down and long now. The Aggies have been all day in that 4-3 as their base and after Slipping Rutherford rolling hard to the left. Waits now. Fires down toward the end zone. Incomplete. And again, it was a block and throw. The intended receiver. Weston with coverage on that play. And it'll be third down and long. And if the Aggies hold here, they're going to give themselves another chance to get the football. Yeah, but worth a shot, I think. I mean, you got one-on-one -on -one coverage out there. And uh, AM is loaded up to stop the run game right now. And if you finish this game off, you keep completely one downfield. 
They go to the extra wide receiver. The Panthers do. Is the fullback polite? This uh, this off this offense for Pitt will be tough to stop for anyone. They got a lot of weapons here. Fitzgerald's off to the left side. Timeout is called by Rutherford. 7:22. Now with third down, 7.22. Northford with a short drop. Now he pulls it out further to the left, and he's going to strike downfield. Oh, my! What a catch by Fitzgerald! Amazing. Oh, mercy! He's done it again! The man is remarkable! Perfect body lean. He faced... Kept that defender on his back and just leaned back and did a Willie Mays on this one. That's what you got to do. You got a great player. Double coverage doesn't matter. He seizes it. He judges it now, and he slows down and catches it right over the shoulder. Beautiful play and another touchdown. He adjusted while the ball was Absolutely. in the air. Went Will over to the left. Never, never <laughs> what a took his eyes off the football. Aggies were there. Great coverage. You certainly can't criticize the coverage. <laughs> it has been a long time since I have seen a college receiver who can make the catch in the air like Larry Fitzgerald has. Three more touchdowns for him today. Folks, take a look at this. This is just wonderful. They are bracketing him. Double coverage. Doesn't matter. He runs right by the safety. And then watch him adjust, adjust, and then just puts it right over his helmet right there. I got to say, you know, he reminds me of Lynn Swan, the way he reacts to the ball in the air. He's just beautiful. He never has to break stride. He's just a wonderful football player. Oh, you can see why uh, why people are so high on him. As, and he's such a fine young man. His father, of course, again, up in the uh, press box, in case you just joined us. And his mother, uh, battling cancer, passed away last April. And uh, Larry has dedicated the entire season to her. He grew up in the Minneapolis area, was a ball boy for the Minnesota Vikings. And, uh, Walt Harris' father knew that uh, that Walt had been very successful with, uh, with good wide receivers. And uh, he wanted him to go there after a year of military school. School, uh, to pick up his grade point average, it uh, was just a it's, a, it's a great, it's a great story. I, and here's uh, what, he's, uh, nice, what uh, he's accomplished here. Rod Rutherford, nice coming out of, out of whack. Take that out of whack stat, GD. 10 for 17 in the second half, four touchdown passes and no interceptions. Of course, you got a guy like that. You know what's nice about that call for Walt Harris, Brent, is even if that thing's picked off, it's like a punt. I mean, you got one guy down there. Nothing really bad can happen. You just throw it up and go get it. Yeah, good point. Walt Harris has had a heck of a second half. Sure so has. An entire coaching staff. And uh, not to mention the game that uh, Larry Fitzgerald has had. And uh, somewhere I hope that Chris Carter was able to watch the uh, the last two catches by, uh, by Fitzgerald. All three of them in the end zone. And, and, uh, would, make, would make Chris very proud. He's uh, worked with the young man. And, uh, man, never met a touchdown. Pass that he couldn't catch. Even, even Aggie fans have to uh, have to congratulate the young man for his performance here today. And Murphy will take a deep. If you've ever stripped a screw or broke. Incomplete here. Well, Texas A&M has 522 yards total offense. They've only got 20 points. You can see the turnovers have just killed them. The three fumbles and the interception here today. And uh, 4.53 left with a 37-20 score right now. And our thanks go out to our executive producer of ABC Sports, Mike Pearl. The senior producer of ABC Sports, Bob Toms. And the coordinating producer of ABC's college football and the producer of our game here, a Texan himself, the old tight end from SNU, Bobby Goodrich. And our director is Larry Cam. Here comes Warm back again now. Down complete. Yeah. First down inside the 10 yard line. He puts the uh, ball back in the, the hands of his main man since he's come on the field. Terrence Murphy has done a lot of things for him. See, when you throw off that downfield foot like that, you have something on it. As uh, you see, another guy got chopped on that play. 
Thomas Smith, defensive end. That's what happened to D4. Spectacular the two was Fitzgerald. Right. The more surprising of the two was Perkins for anybody to, to do take three. three punts back. Never been done. Uh, what do you have, 277 yards, right. George Hill? Yeah, 277. Well, you bet it's on two tremendous individual performances back to back. Here. And uh, second down, second down and goal. At the one yard line, it'll be third down and goal. That was a tremendous throw by Long that time. Pittsburgh knew it was the same play going the other direction. They ran underneath the throw, and Long just kind of put a little touch on it and threw it right over the linebacker. Beautiful play. Watch, the, watch it run underneath it right here. And watch the touch on the ball. This could have been intercepted. Just lays it up right to the pylon. Beautiful throw. Clint Sessions, number 17, knew the play was coming. Still couldn't stop it. Third down now for Long and the Aggies. Stopped. And a fine tackle by Clint Session. Session is the other true freshman, along with Blades. Both of them playing in the linebacker position. And here comes a uh, fourth down. Obviously, the Aggies will go for it. They'll call a timeout. And uh, so we have a moment here in uh, our Chevrolet players of the game. And certainly no question about uh, the young man from Pittsburgh. Seven catches, 135 yards, three touchdowns. And for the Aggies, redshirt freshman Courtney Lewis, 179 total yards and one touchdown in, uh, in recognition of their efforts. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Uh, you know, uh, we've been operating here today without our regular technical director, Monty Poling. Uh, unfortunately, his parents uh, suffered at the, uh, the hands of Hurricane Isabel. We certainly hope everything is fine out east. And uh, Brad Rowe came in here, and Bobby Goodrich, uh, Tells me from the truck that he did a heck of a job. So, Brad, thanks for filling in. And, of course, Drew Kaliski, the Z-man himself, <laughs> traveling to Pittsburgh, coming down here, putting those pieces together. And Associate Director Brian Fay, thanks to you guys and our computer stats, Craig Rothberg and Jason Polstein. And certainly to our cameramen. And uh, we have one who's a very good friend of the Fitzgerald family, I might add, down here. He's been operating down around the 50-yard line. Mike Croak is uh, with us here today, and uh, Dustin Long spinning, throws back, touchdown! Aggies had a uh, pretty play as Long has led the Aggies to two touchdowns. Andy Matakis with the touchdown. One of the backup tight ends that AM has used this year. They got about four of them. Bootleg play on fourth down. Long comes out, stretches, looks back the whole way, he knows he's coming around, and throws it beautifully. Can't drop that one by Matakis. Now uh, Todd Pegram. Oh. oh, he's had trouble today, oh. hasn't he? Oh, this is uh, an extra point. That's, that's off to the right. So uh, go figure. Right? You're six of six coming in, you hit a couple, and then uh, things start to go bad for you. Now it's 37 26. All right now, Coach Fran is saying concentrate. Finish off the game. Here's the bootleg the play. Dustin Long has made one mistake in the game. He threw off his back foot over the middle. Besides that, he's been perfect. Read this one out and laid it right in there nicely for the big old tight end to catch. Gary Danielson uh, is dancing over here to my right. His uh, Perduskis lead Notre Dame 23-10 and inside of three minutes to go in that game. So Notre Dame, Gary, is about to go winless against the Big Ten. Very unusual. Yes, it is. Maybe they should go to the ACC. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> he said it, folks. <laughs> well, I, I, you know what I got to give it to a bit, too, is Rod Rutherford. He, he, we, we've showed his stats first half to second half. 
he struggled a bit or he was off a little rhythm or, or whatever. He just didn't seem to be right. Went in there, regrouped at halftime, just took his time, came out the first play of the second half and threw the 10 yard out to Larry Fitzgerald. And from then on, it looked like he was in sync. Jack Root. Well, Brent, let's not forget that that was the key for Walter Harris, the head coach. He gathered Rod Rutherford while all of his assistants are, you know, screaming and yelling and getting everybody pumped <laughs> up. He was real quiet over there, explaining very calmly to Rod what needed to be done in the second half. He had to like that about a head coach. Good coach. Now let's see if we don't see that. Coach Fran onside kick. Pittsburgh certainly expects it. They've got the good hands people out there right now. He must have four to the opposite side of the ball. There it is. Jacob Young will try it. There's the onside kick, and uh, Pittsburgh falls on it on the 45-yard line. They'll have possession right there with Rutherford on the field to, uh, to clean up. Yeah, he didn't kick it far enough. He kicked it too much to the center of the field. It should have gone wide to the outside. Just kind of poor execution on the, on the onside kick. Ball should have kicked, been kicked real wide. It takes one big hop right at it. This was kind of an easy one for Pittsburgh. Bobble, two guys went at it, but time to cover it up. Almost a thousand yards of offense here today between these two teams. But the uh, the Panthers had the playmakers. And they showed up in the second half. And then the fullback right straight ahead, just bringing the clock down now. Second down and five, still on the field here in mop up time. White. Running away at the middle, keeping the clock running. Tay Tay Thompson, freshman linebacker from Garland, Texas, on the field today. A reminder of what's ahead of us next week. Gary and I'll be over in Austin. You see the horns. It's Kansas State. Big 12 game coming up. Aggies using up a timeout here. 2.43 to go. Well, it'll take a little while for uh, Coach Fran to get the personnel that he, that he wants. Meanwhile, Walt Harris seems to have the personnel in place up at Pittsburgh. This team could still go a long, long way, especially with this offense right. that he showed us here today. I guess uh, Gary has pointed out there's some tackling issues with that defense that are going to need to be corrected. And, uh, because they've still got some tough games ahead of them. Absolutely. You know, they've got uh, Notre Dame next that comes in there. That should be somewhat simple to stop. Everybody else has been stopping them. But, you know, when you get Virginia Tech coming in and Miami, you can't have a secondary giving up 500 yards like this, 200 on the ground and 300 in the air. Kind of shoddy tackling has been the problem on defense, and you're going to have to score a lot of points to win these games for Walt Harris. It's final. The dude beats the Irish 23 to 10. So after that comeback against Washington State, the Irish have lost three in a row, and it's third and one. Jumping early, I guess Maurice Claret, he was a subject for the fellows at halftime. And uh, yeah, Larry Fitzgerald, when you watch this great talent, you wonder about him. And and so Jack Aroot was in Pittsburgh. He asked him about jumping to the NFL early. In college, you get red shirt if you're not prepared to come in. NFL, they don't have time to um, really shape and mold the guy. I mean, you got to come in and you got to be prepared to help the team win right away as soon as you step in the door. And, um, you know, that's hard to do at such a young age. You know, here's a, here's a young man whose father covered a team, and he has watched how tough it is for for professional athletes. He would not be eligible to 2005 under the current guidelines. Whether or not he would get those changed, we, we still don't know. But he is only a sophomore. And when he went to military school, he had not yet graduated from high school. So the way the wording is in the NFL situation, he would not be able to come out until 2005. But again, we have to wait and see. Yeah, where's that word? Uh, <laughs> everything uh, shakes down. It is in uh, Paul Tagliabue's office. That's right. Here, exactly. Where it is. It's, uh, and, uh, everybody's Tagliabue it is. says he will fight it. And uh, so we'll see what happens to young Correct. Second down. Nine yards to go. 
Walker, the uh, cleanup up running back. Rutherford will keep this one himself. Keep it out, stay in bound. And uh, the Aggies run him out. Number 12, Rutherford like carries to the 10-yard line. Hard hitting and uh, first tackling safety. Well, Rutherford's bigger than I thought he was. When I, first time I showed up, I saw him play earlier in his career on TV one time, and I said, young guy, skinny, he's filled out, probably 225, 230 pounds, and uh, looks like he can take a hit, showing that he can deliver the ball all different angles. We get word from the West Coast. 55 to 16, Washington State is pounding Oregon. First down from the 10 yard line. Boy, if you win a big game, look out the next week, huh? How about Arkansas? They go in and beat Texas in Austin, and now Alabama beating up on them a week after they lost to Northern Illinois in Tuscaloosa. So, uh, you know, go figure. There's polite, there's. Uh, a couple of flags. Face mask, I believe, was called over there. Repeat first down. As you mentioned, Walt Harris, you know, uh, Larry Fitzgerald came down talking to his dad when we were up there. He said he came down to Ohio State or Pittsburgh, his last two teams. Well, you know, Chris Carter was yep. playing for the Buckeyes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, he thought he'd get more balls going to Pittsburgh. He was right, I think, don't you? Absolutely. <laughs> First down and goal now for the Panthers. Running the fullback. Straight ahead. Now, uh, they got here's, where, here's where folks sometimes get the, uh, the wrong impression, I feel, of running up the score. If the Panthers score a touchdown, that's just the way it is. You can't tell them to stay out of the end zone. And uh, Walt's trying to bring it down. He's running the fullback right straight ahead, on into the end zone. And he's waiting to tell him to take the knee over there uh, and, and end it. And Walt was watching the clock carefully. But, uh, but if the young man had scored, you know, so be it. And uh, in the old days, Gary, I used to get upset when guys ran scores up the. There's the congratulations by Walt Harris, who did just a superb job with this coaching staff sure of changing things up at the intermission. Jack Aroot was fortunate enough to be inside the locker room. He takes the knee. You saw the signal, and uh, that's going to do it. So Walt Harris on his first trip ever to coach down here at Texas A&M is coming away with the win, 37 to 26. Going out now to see Coach Fran. And uh, Francione will put the show on the road down here. Take him a little bit of time, a couple of recruiting classes. Uh, you can see uh, Francione with a couple of words on, uh, on how good his team played. And uh, Coach Fran knows him a lot. Here